Hi, I'm Chloe. Thank you for visiting our video. Find out why our team can provide you the best services for your needs. Hundreds of clients can't be wrong. Check out the following video. Real estate, real estate with real with real Kasha. Kasha. So hail. So hail. Welcome to Washington America show with international multimedia journalist, multidimensional, multifaceted artist and director of Human Rights Justice Council USA, Dr. Kasha So hail. So hail. good rule to follow when drafting rules or regulations is to draft them so they don't single out children or members of a protected class. Rather than having a sign that says, children are prohibited from running in the common areas, say no running in the common areas. Instead of saying, children keep off the grass, have the sign read, keep off the grass. Rules and regulations that apply to all residents are less suspect than rules that single out children. If you need to single out children, consider doing so on the basis of health and safety considerations. For example, if you have the workout room with exercise equipment asks the manufacturer to inform you what the age is for using the equipment without supervision. Then post a sign such as according to the manufacturer, this equipment may not be used by anyone under 14 years old, unless accompanied by an adult. If you're a housing provider, one way to reduce the probability of having a complaint fled against you is to treat everyone the same. Having written guidelines that you follow with each applicant may help you treat everyone the same. Therefore, whether you're managing hundreds of units for a large company or an individual who owns and rents a few units, you should establish written guidelines for everything. From how you expect the rent to be paid, to your eviction process, to how you expect tenants to behave while living in your dwelling. Part of your screening guidelines should include an applicant's ability to timely pay the rent. Therefore, you may ask the applicant to provide employment, income, and credit verification information. How much income and how long of an employment history you require depends on your housing market. You should set standards that allow you to compete for applicants, but setting standards too high may be viewed as trying to keep certain groups of people out of your rentals. In addition to asking an applicant to verify their income and credit history, you may also ask an applicant to provide character references. Character references may indicate what type of personal history your applicant has. If the applicant has a certain criminal history, you may choose not to rent to them. These may include applicants who are convicted thieves or burglars. In fact, you may choose to exclude any applicant who has a conviction that could present a safety issue for other residents in your complex. If you are concerned about renting to certain convicted criminals, you may establish a criminal background check as part of your application criteria. In establishing a criminal background check, keep few things in mind. Put your policy in writing, get the applicant's permission to conduct the background check, enforce the policy consistently, and if you reject the applicant, tell them why. Consistently applying a criminal background check policy means that you apply the policy to everyone. You apply it to the young, the old, and to everyone in between. Even if you do not establish a criminal background check, you are not going to accept every applicant. Rejecting applicants for legitimate credit or income or character reasons should not invite a complaint if you follow certain procedures. 
As noted, you should establish written rental criteria that help an applicant understand how his application will be screened. Then apply your criteria consistently. If you reject an applicant, send them a letter explaining why you rejected them. Always, keep excellent records. After you've approved an application, the tenant moves in. However, shortly after the tenant moves in, you start getting complaints. The newest tenant might harass other tenants. You might also get complaints that they're playing their music too loud. You should act wisely. When tenants break the rules, you should apply the consequences fairly, consistently, and according to established procedures. What consequences you apply depend on your procedures and on the records you've kept. Some of the records that you should keep include, complaints that tenants file against other tenants, complaints that involve the police, letters that you sent to and received from the tenant about lease violations, as well as other relevant letters and information. Keeping detailed and accurate records will be important if you have to defend why you evicted the tenant. If you don't keep good records, or if you keep poor records, proving that you evicted a tenant for a non-discriminatory reason may be more difficult. Generally, repairs should be done in the order that they are received, with emergency repairs taking precedence over routine repairs. Your tenants should understand how you process repair requests and they should understand how long it will take before you get to their request. If an emergency repair takes you or your staff away from a scheduled routine repair, call the affected tenant and explain what happened. Some of the things that you can do to reduce the probability of having a housing complaint flight against you is to be professional, be consistent, communicate with your tenants, and keep excellent records. On the other hand, tenants need to understand that routine and non-emergency repairs may take at least a few days to repair. Handicap is an additional protected class to fair housing law of many states. Being handicapped includes, but is not limited to, psychological disorders, emotional and mental illnesses, learning disabilities, and recovering drug addicts and alcoholics. If someone is disabled, you cannot refuse to rent to them because of their disability. If you are a housing provider, the law also requires that you accommodate a person's disability by changing or modifying a rule policy, or practice when doing so is necessary to give the disabled person equal opportunity to use and enjoy his, or her, unit. Under the Fair Housing Law, a housing provider who has established an OPET policy must allow a disabled resident to keep a service animal as a reasonable accommodation. The housing provider must allow the disabled resident to keep the service animal if three conditions are met, the resident must meet the definition of handicapped, as defined in the fair housing law, the housing provider must know about, or should have known about, the resident's handicap, and the accommodation must be necessary to afford the disabled resident an equal opportunity to use and enjoy the dwelling. The only requirement to be classified as a service animal under federal law is that the animal must be individually trained and must work for the benefit of the disabled individual. There is no requirement as to the amount of training that the animal must take nor is there a requirement as to the amount of work that the animal must do for the disabled resident. Blind applicant for rental housing wants to live in a dwelling unit with a seeing eye dog. The building has a no pets policy. 
It is a violation of the law for the owner or a manager of the apartment complex to refuse to permit the applicant to live in the apartment without the seeing eye dog because without the seeing eye dog the blind person will not have the opportunity to use and enjoy the dwelling. So, since you've learned more about us, click the link in the description to see how you can contact us. Please share this video, subscribe to our channel. Are you looking to buy or sell a home anytime soon? If so, you've come to the right place. We'd like to give you the opportunity to work with one of the top local real estate agents and get the best deal when buying or selling a home. The fact is, experienced agents can often get you a 2 to 10% better deal on the purchase or sale of a property, mostly due to their experience in the local marketplace and their ability to negotiate the best deal. So contact our top agent now and start the process of buying or selling your home.